annoyed. I'm so annoyed. Well, hello peoples of the internet. My name is Kevin and welcome back to another video. Okay guys, so welcome to my new reading for the first time reading vlog series that I do on my channel. I've done this already for the Twilight series and for the Fifty Shades of Grey series and I will link the playlist to both of those down below in the description if you would like to go check those out. But for today, we are starting a new series and if you've seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail, you know what it is. The book I am reading and the new series that I am starting is reading After by Anna Todd for the first time. Now unlike my Twilight series and my Fifty Shades of Grey series, I had actually already seen the movies for all of them before I read the books. But with After, I've never read the book and I've never seen the movie. So I don't really know what to expect. What I do know about this book is that it was on Wattpad first as a Harry Styles fan fiction. That is one of the appeals to me because we stan Harry Styles in this household. Like, don't come near me with any Harry Styles slander. It's not accepted. Like, absolutely no slander for Harry Styles is allowed because he is an icon. I literally stan Harry Styles with all of my being. So knowing one of the main characters is like, based off Harry Styles, I hope it's in a good way, intrigues me because I'm wondering will there be any like hints like that I'll pick up where I can just be like, oh my god, Watermelon Sugar High, Yes Queen, Under the Canyon Moon, Let's Go, and oh my god, I am falling. Like, I want all of those feels. I hope I'll end up enjoying it. I don't know if I will because I have seen a lot of negativity about this and my best friend Perina she always likes like nearly everything. Like she rarely dislikes stuff, especially like books and movies. And she disliked it. So I'm like, so if it was enough for my best friend to dislike it, the person who loves everything, I'm concerned because if she didn't like it, most likely I'm not going to like it. But I'm erasing that mindset from my head because I want to go in with a clean slate, open mind and I'm just going to embrace it and see how it is. I will share my reactions, share my thoughts with you all just like I do with every single one of these videos and we shall see how I will find this book. Now let's talk about the cover because as you know we also do cover analysis when I do these videos and this is obviously the movie edition because there is a movie for this and this is the movie cover and I actually did get this from my friend Perina, the one I just talked about like this is who I got this off. There's nothing really much to say about the cover except like I love how the tattoos on his back and I'm like Harry Styles. I'm gonna have such a hard time not picturing Harry Styles the entire time I read this. And they do look like they're very romantically involved. I don't know what gave that away or what made that so obvious, but I think they're in a relationship. I was going to read the back of it, but I'm like, I think I should just go in with the mindset of literally not knowing much because I've seen the trailer for it and that's it. So yeah, I'm gonna go start reading this right now. And I do wanna mention that there is gonna be spoilers in this video. If you don't know, when I do these vlogs, I always share my reactions, share spoilers, so if you do not want to be spoiled for this book, do not continue watching because I am about to share spoilers. So let's go start reading After by Anna Todd. Okay, I'm about to start reading. There's actually an author's note at the front, so I'm gonna read that first and then I'm gonna continue, but here we go. Okay, so I just read the prologue and there's a part in here that I was just like, me. So it's kind of like the main character is speaking to you like after everything has happened, and hence the word after. So one of the things she said that I'm like, me, is the fact she goes, I would love to give a straight answer to that, but I can't. And I'm like, honey, either can I because I'm very gay. And then also, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of love how this was worded. So the very last line of the prologue says, all that I'm certain of is that my life and heart will never be the same, not after Harden crashed into them. I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely love how she just tied in the name of the book into the last sentence of the prologue. Genius. Okay, so I'm just up to chapter three and page 11 and Tessa, which is the main character, has basically just moved into her college dorm in Washington, uh, what was the name of the college? Washington something? Washington Central University is where she's gone. And she basically just moved into like her dorm room and she met her roommate who 
had tattoos and piercings and they just immediately judged her like straight away the minute they saw the piercings and the tattoos and the mother was like we're getting you a new room right now and I'm like why are you judging someone so quickly? One thing I'm gonna say that I'm going to love about this book is the chapters seem to be very short and I understand that's probably because it was a Wattpad book and I live for short chapters. I don't know if you know this about me, but short chapters are my favorite thing because it makes me read even faster because I feel like I haven't read that much because the chapters are going by so fast, but like in reality, I'm actually reading so fast. So we love short chapters in this household. We absolutely stand them. Okay, so she's just like unpacked all of her belongings in her dorm room. I'm on page 12, by the way. <laughs> Only like two more pages since I last spoke to you. And she just goes, so far, college is neither what I have dreamed or expected. She has literally gone into a dorm room and unpacked her belongings and met a roommate. And she's like, college is so not what I expected already. You haven't even experienced college yet. <laughs> Calm down. Okay, so we've already met Harden and he has like a British accent as well. So like, it's Harry Styles. And basically what just happened is she went to go have a shower or something and then she came back into her dorm room and he was like lying on her roommate's bed and she was kind of like, um, what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm just here. And she's like, can you look away? And Thankfully, he rolled over and didn't look, but he really should have left. But yeah, and now there was like a party that's gonna be happening tonight and her roommate was saying, oh, you should come to the party. And then and then Tessa was like, oh, parties aren't really my thing. I don't wanna go. And then Harden was like, ha, knew it, knew she wouldn't go. Let's just leave her, she's not gonna come. And then Tessa's like, actually, just to spite you, I am gonna go. You know what? I am gonna leave. You wanna know what? No, I am gonna leave. <laughs> I don't know why that just kept in my head. So I'm on page 39. And basically the party has ended and it's the next morning and Harden, we find out, is actually a frat boy and he's part of this frat in college. And he's like cleaning up and stuff. And Tessa wants to go back to her dorm room. So she's like, I want to go home. So can you tell me how I can get home? And she goes, is there a bus that runs close to here? I asked, not expecting an answer. Yep, about a block away, Harden says. I follow him around the kitchen. Could you tell me where it is? Sure, it's about a block away. <laughs> Like, this sarcasticness is everything to me. Like, I find that so funny. Like, oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. I have no idea what just happened. I'm on page 44 and Harden and Tessa were like walking out of their class because they ended up having a class together. And this is exactly what it says. We begin walking along back in the direction of my dorm and get about 20 steps when all of a sudden he shouts out, stop staring at me turns a corner and disappears down a pathway before I can even think of a response. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so confused. Why did he just casually just scream at her, stop staring at me and then just leave? Confused. Hello everyone, so it's the next day and I'm now up to page 66 of after and up to chapter 18 But I want to go back to page 63 and talk about something and read a line because it made me giggle So basically what has been happening is they went to another party again And this time Tessa got drunk for the first time and she was like dealing with being drunk and stuff And like people were laughing at her and stuff like that and they were playing truth or dare Harden got dared to kiss Tessa but Tessa said no because she has a boyfriend and then she went up upstairs and went into Harden's bedroom and he's mad about that because he's like I told you before don't come into my bedroom and don't touch my things and then he basically kind of like starts to look after her which I found kind of sweet like he literally went and got her water and like started like comforting her and he was like you don't drink I need to help you like I'm gonna look after you and I'm like okay kind of sweet not gonna lie and then basically like Harden is talking about her boyfriend Noah and he's like saying oh he must be so boring I can I know he's so boring like he definitely wears cardigans and loafers and I'm like that's funny that he's saying that you wear cardigans when we all know Harry Style and the cardigan like you know that ironicness I don't even think that was a thing when this book was written but like now it's so ironic so because Tessa keeps saying oh he's not boring you don't know him and all this kind of stuff Harden then says well, he has been dating you for two years and hasn't fucked you yet. So I would say he is a square. Oh 
I don't know why, but I was not expecting this to be that kind of book. And now I'm starting to realize that maybe it is going to be that kind of book. Hello. So it has been two weeks since I picked up After and I haven't read anything since the last time I spoke to you because I ended up picking up Midnight Sun to read and I just haven't gotten back to this yet. But we're back. We're gonna return to Harden and test Tessa, Tessa. Nearly forgot her name there, but that's okay. I don't know why I had to tell you that it had been two weeks since I last read, because like to you, obviously you don't see that. So it doesn't feel like it's been two weeks, but anyways, I'm getting back to the book. Okay, so I just, I'm up to chapter 20 now and I'm on page 73 and Hardin and Tessa just like kissed each other because Tessa was at the party. And like I said, in like the last clip, I think she was drunk and stuff and so she went to this room and she locked herself in a room with like a drunk guy on a bed, like asleep. And then that guy tried to like make a pass at Tessa, but then she like kicked him in the, where the sun doesn't shine. And then she left the room and the guy was like chasing after her. So she ran to like Hardin's bedroom because it was like the only place she knew to go. And she was like banging on the door and then Hardin opened the door and let her go in. And he protected her basically from that guy coming after her. So like we love that he gave her a safe place. I love that. And then basically the two of them are like in the bed or whatever and like Hardin's only in his underwear and so they start talking or whatever and then Tessa kisses him and then they start like very passionately kissing and stuff and then Tessa stops because she thinks about her boyfriend Noah and I'm not gonna sit here and lie. I was very much into that whole scene. I was like, yes, I am living. So I'm not gonna say, ew, that was awful or whatever. I was living for it. I was literally living for it. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I'm just picturing Harry Styles and I was like, yes, honey, kiss Harry Styles. Get your watermelon sugar high. So yeah, that's where I am. I just wanted to update because like we had the first kiss, which I feel like is a very pivotal moment in the book and I feel like it needed to be discussed. Okay, so Tessa's mom and boyfriend just showed up and they were not happy. And one thing that I am annoyed about and I really hope happens here is I hope Tessa tells Noah about her cheating because obviously I don't like cheating like I'm not for that so she literally just kissed another boy like I really hope she tells him and it's not a case where she doesn't tell him and then he finds out and then that's not what I want to happen but probably that is what is going to happen because it's going to be that cliche but I really hope she just tells him because like just don't cheat on people like just don't like just tell him tell him communicate just let it be known that it happened and don't hide it from him but we shall see if she will tell him. My guess is she's not going to. Okay, everyone, so it's another few days since I last vlogged, but I'm up to page 131, and what has happened so far is she's still cheating on her boyfriend, which I'm really, really, really not liking. I just don't like reading about people that are cheating. Like, I just, I can't stand it. I just can't. But aside from that, what has happened is Tessa and Hardin went to this, like, lake or river or something, and they went swimming and stuff, and then they got out of there, and he ended up using his fingers. Not gonna elaborate. You can probably put two and two together. If you read the book as well, you know what I'm talking about. And then Tessa was like saying how she was gonna go break up with her boyfriend, but then Hardin was like, I don't date, so why do you have this idea that we're gonna become a thing? Don't break up with him. And now Tessa and Hardin aren't talking to each other again. Okay, I'm on to page 148, and basically Hardin just got like really drunk and like smashed up um, his kind of stepbrother's house. And then Tessa had to come and like basically try calm him down or something. And they were like having a conversation or whatever. And then they kissed and Tessa was like, I can't keep doing this when you're so mean to me and all this kind of stuff. And then he said that he thinks that when Tessa's with him, she is her true self. And then he said to her, I know you think I'm a bad person, but you make me, you make me want to be good for you. I want to be good for you, Tess. And I am up here just singing Good For You by Selena Gomez because in the trailer for this movie, I am pretty sure Good For You is in the trailer. So like now there's like a lyric for it as well, which I <laughs> love that. And now I need to listen to it. I'm gonna play it right now. I, like I kind of have to listen to it. Anyways, about to play it. I am so excited and I'm gonna continue reading while it plays.
Okay guys, so it's much later, as you can tell, and I'm now up to page... <laughs> 232 of after and I just wanted to do some like generalization and like discussing how I feel about the book so far. So first of all I do want to say like I want to start out with a positive and say that this like how I read Fifty Shades of Grey for the first time it's one of those books again where I can't help but want to keep reading because I just want to know more and it's like I don't know what I don't know what the word is I'm looking for but like I don't want to say it's a guilty pleasure because I haven't finished it yet to say if it's a guilty pleasure or not. I want to keep reading even though like it's not the best thing I've ever read like it's really not but I want to keep reading to know what's happening because I'm like I don't know it's really weird but yeah the things that I'm not enjoying are of course the cheating aspect of this book and Tessa basically cheating on her boyfriend and she told her boyfriend about it and then she promised him that she wouldn't see Harden ever again and yet she is doing stuff with Harden and all these things and I'm like just end it with your boyfriend like you owe him that respect anyways so that's one thing I'm not really liking number two is it's very, very, very repetitive, just like me saying the word very. Like, a lot of the conversations Tessa and Harden are having, I feel like they've had constantly. Like, they keep saying, oh my god, we can't be around each other, you're just too mean to me, and all this kind of stuff. And then they're like, oh no, we can be friends. And then, like, two seconds later, they're angry again, and like, we can't be friends. And then, literally two seconds later, oh my god, we should just be friends. Like... I'm like, stop having the same conversations. <laughs> like, it's so annoying. And the thing is as well, Tessa literally says, like, in her dialogue, like, her inner monologue while she's, like, speaking, it's like, oh, we're having the same conversations again. And I'm like, I'm reading you have the same conversations again. It's very frustrating. And then thirdly, the other thing that's bothering me is I don't like how Harden is like an emotional abuser. Because there are times in here where he basically like guilt trips Tessa into doing things, which I really don't like. For instance, there's this part where they were watching this movie in her dorm room and he's on her bed and she's on her roommate's bed. And he's like, oh my god, Tessa, you should sleep with me. Like, I just sleep better when you're beside me. She says, no, I can't do that. I have a boyfriend. She's trying to be a good person. But I'm like, honey, you've cheated already by now. Like, like, there's no way coming back from this. Like, why are you trying? Like, just end your relationship with your boyfriend. <laughs> but anyways, what I was saying <laughs> before I just went on that little bit of a rant. What I hate is, like, he asked her to go sleep in the bed with him. And she said no. And then basically he goes... Please sleep in the bed with me. I sleep so much better than you do. And then, like, he starts making her feel guilty. Because then she's like, oh, do I? And he's like, yeah, you make me feel better. And then she ends up sleeping with him. And I'm like, you're guilt tripping her into doing these things. And, like, you're basically saying something to plant something into her mind. To manipulate her to do what you want her to do. He's a manipulator. Emotional abuser. I don't stand. But also, going back to positives there are moments where he says stuff and does stuff that's like really cute and i hate myself for thinking this right now and i'm like oh my god cute no kevin stop we're erasing that thought from my memory it's not allowed we're not allowing her in here you heard it here we're not allowing it when you hear me say it next time call me out we're not allowing it okay guys so it's the next day and as you can see i am vlogging outside don't usually do that because it can be quite chaotic but like this vlog and this book is already chaotic as it is so like kind of fits the vibe but like there's a neighbor cutting their hedge with like a trimmers there is dogs barking there's cars going by on the road it's windy there's so many things going on, so it's probably gonna get too loud, and I probably won't vlog much outside. But I'm sitting in like my sister's like egg type chair, which she has like on her veranda of her house, which if you don't know, my sister is like my neighbor. But anyways, I'm up to page 252, and something just happened, and like I did not expect this to go into so much detail, like with explicit content. Basically, Harden and Tessa were doing something up in a bedroom because Tessa went to Harden's dad's house and they had dinner and stuff and then they went up to a room and they did some stuff. Basically what I would say is that Harden got a taste 
of something. And then Karen, which is like Harden's new like stepmom kind of thing, came up to the room to like say that she made dessert and to come down to have dessert. And basically they say that they're gonna go downstairs to have dessert, but then Harden goes, I've already had my dessert. Yes, he did. Okay, so page 261, they are in bed because it's like later that night and they ended up staying the night. And can you not bark? I'm trying to talk about intimate moment here between Harden and Tessa. Thank you. So they're in bed and stuff and Harden's like, I can't get enough of you, Tess. And then she's like, I want to do something for you because she wants to make him feel how she's made him. F no, she wants to make him feel how he has made her feel. That was a mouthful to say. Which is also relevant to saying a mouthful because that's exactly what Tessa wants. <laughs> I'm so funny. And then he says, I really want those plump lips wrapped around me. See, she wants a mouthful, or he wants to give her a mouthful. <laughs> a few moments later. Guess who's angry? Me. Where do I begin? So, like, remember how I was like in my head, oh my god, this is not as bad as I thought it would be. Like, I think people give this such bad rep. Like, it's not that bad. <sighs> I'm taking it back. I'm upset with myself. And the fact that this book manipulated me into thinking that makes me upset. Like, who am I anymore? Anyways, so I'm up to page 329, chapter 61, and I'm just livid. Like, I'm literally so angry because one thing that I, I'm really not liking in this book is the slut shaming and, like, the girl and girl hate because I cannot stand, like, Tessa, like, slut shaming this Molly character so freaking much. Like, it, it's really annoying me. We don't even know her enough to, like, have strong hatred towards her or whatever, but, like, the slut shaming and everything, I'm I'm not here for that. Absolutely not here for it. Like Tessa as a character, maybe I just don't stand for what she stands for. She cheated, slut shaming, like no. And then also, the other thing that I am hating is I already talked about Harden manipulating and stuff like that. But the one thing that's really annoying me right now is how much of a gaslighter he is. Like, oh, if I can find the line, if I can find it. There's something he said and I was like, oh my God, this is a gaslighter right here. Like this is literally what it's like to be gaslit. So Harden is saying, what? You think that's what I'm doing? You think I'm using you? No, that's not what I think Harden. That's what I know. But guess what? I'm done. I am so beyond done. I will change dorms if I have to, so I don't have to see you again. I say it and mean it. I don't need any of these people making my life worse. You're overreacting, he says flatly. And it takes everything in me to not slap him again. It's the over, like, uh, it's that, oh, you're overreacting. There's another part again where it's just like, it gets me even more annoyed. Okay, yeah, here it is. Well, this is more like leading her on, or maybe you could say it's gaslighting at the same time, but this part in particular, I'm thinking more is like, you're leading her on, but it's also kind of a form of gaslighting at the same time. But they say a couple of other things, and then she says, so why even waste your time with me? Why even follow me out here at Harden? When he doesn't say anything, I have my answer. That's what I thought. You thought you could come out here and say sorry and I would accept and stay a secret. Your boring little hidden girlfriend. You're wrong. You took my kindness for weakness and you were sadly mistaken. Girlfriend? Question mark. You thought you were my girlfriend? He howls. The pain in my chest is magnified by a thousand and I can barely stand. No, dot dot. I... I start to say, I don't know what to say. You did, didn't you? Question mark. He says, laughing. Mm. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I'm just so annoyed. Like, he literally led her on so, so much. And then he just, like, has the audacity to, like, gaslight her and, like, make her think, oh my god, you thought this? You're such a freak. Why would you think that? Like, mm. <laughs> I can't stand it. <sighs> mm. It's fine. It is fine. But like, I, do you know what really bothers me? Do you know what really, really, really gets me? Is the fact 
that I was like in my head thinking, oh my god, this book is literally nowhere near as bad as like the rep it has. Like I was literally sitting here like, oh my god, he's not even like that bad. Like obviously Hardin's not the best person out there. Like he's clearly manipulating her and stuff like that. But like comparing him to Christian Grey, I was like, oh my god, no. He like he's not even that bad. Like Christian Grey was way worse. But Hardin was just manipulating me and now I feel like a dumb bitch. There's so much to think about right now. So much to unpack. So much thoughts to like just sit on here and let develop, you know? Like let it build so that it's been ready to be unpacked. So much. Wow, I just feel like this really woof of like serenity just came over me there. It's like I needed to get out what I was saying there. Like I needed to get that rant out, but now I feel like, I don't know. I feel good now. Oh my God, I feel really good. Okay, great. So we're gonna keep reading. <laughs> I don't know how that just happened. I just ranted and now I feel great. I'm gonna keep reading and I shall update you in a bit to see what happens because right at the end of the chapter that I got to, Harden basically, no, Tessa basically got into a car with her friend Landon to drive away because she was just done with Harden. And then Harden was like at the car saying, I love you. And he starts crying and like banging on the window and stuff. And I'm like, you're manipulating her again with like emotional abuse. Like, stop. Like, you're thinking that if you tell her you love her, that you're going to stop her from doing it. Like, yeah. So I'm going to keep reading. I will talk to you later. Hey guys, so it is nighttime and I'm in bed reading more. And I'm actually really far up. Like, I read a good bit. I'm up to page 489. But anyways, I just want to give a bit of a recap. So basically, Harden and Tessa are moving in together. Tessa also has a internship at a publishing house. And she met a guy at the publishing house called Trevor. Which I'm pretty sure is the person that Colt, no, not Cole. Dylan Sprouse is playing in the second movie. I could be wrong in saying that, but I'm pretty sure it was Trevor. So that happened. And then also another thing that happened is Harden and Tessa were going back to her dorm and her mum was like standing outside the door and like her mother, honestly, like, I don't know who she is, but like some of the things that she was saying, and like she said that she got Noah to accept going back to Tessa and like being boyfriend and girlfriend again. So that happened. And then basically where I am now is they had like a party with some guy called Jace and like there was all this tension. I don't know why I must have missed what it was about, like why we hate Jace, but we apparently hate someone called Jace now. But what I wanted to talk about, the meaning behind this vlog clip is on page 489, basically Tessa is waking up to go do her internship or whatever and she's going to walk to the shower and she's also in Harden's frat house. So there's like loads of different boys there at the party and stuff. So he's like, I'll walk you to the bathroom. And then she says, walk me where? To the bathroom? Question mark. I scoff as he rolls out of the bed. I'm a big girl. I can walk myself down the hall. You're doing an amazing job at listening to me so far. He rolls his eyes, but I see the amusement in them. Fine, daddy. Walk me to the bathroom. Not daddy. I don't know why. Like, the thing is, like, I'm not opposed to people saying that. Like, I think it's funny. Or, like, I understand at a time when people say it. But, like, I don't think I've ever read it being used in a book. Like, in a serious sense between, like, a couple. And I don't know how I feel about it. Okay guys, so I'm just like about to be finished the book. I'm on page 575 and like literally this is all I have left. But I think there's a big reveal about to happen because Tessa is at this bar with like all of Harden's friends and stuff. And like Molly and everything's like, oh, you don't know what Harden is doing and all this kind of stuff. So I feel like there's a big reveal about to happen. So I was like, you know what? Need to get my reaction on camera for this. So... No, <laughs> absolutely not. No, no, <laughs> just no, <laughs> no. The reveal just happened, I know. I am trying to see if I'm angry or if I'm disgusted or how I am feeling right now. 
Oh, oh, the way I, I constantly kept saying, oh my God, I don't think this is as bad as like Fifty Shades of Grey or anything. Like, I don't see what's so bad about this book compared to like what everyone's talking about. Oh, I see it now. Oh, I see it now. So, we just found out that I Harden and his friends made this bet when they played Truth or Dare the very first time at a party that they would bet to see who could take Tess's virginity because she said that she was a virgin at the Truth or Dare and they were like, oh, I bet someone could do this and Harden accepted the dare or the bet even. So this whole time he was after her to win money for a bet and now obviously he's like saying, oh my God, but like I actually started to fall in love with you even though I was doing the bed, but like I really actually fell in love with you. But that does not excuse the fact that he literally kept the condom that they used and showed his friends, which is disgusting. Like, ew. And he also kept her bed sheets, which had her blood on it for when they had like the first time. I, and he showed that to his friends as well. I am so disgusted. and. I can't. I actually can't. You know what's even funnier? It's like my best friend Perina and my cousin Emily, they have both read the book and they were like, I cannot wait, Kevin, for you to get to this one part. And like, I was getting near the end and I was like, guys, I think I've already read the part you were talking about and I mustn't have found it that bad. Oh no. I just hadn't gotten there yet because I know exactly that this is the part they were talking about. That just took a turn that I really didn't see coming. Like, I... Wow. Just wow. So I'm finished. <laughs> I have finished reading After by Anna Todd and yeah. So as you guys are very much aware, if you've just seen from the last clip, I was not expecting that to happen and I didn't see it coming. Didn't I just can't even compute my thoughts right now. So yeah, I don't know what I would rate this. I think I would probably give it one star, but like, I don't think I'm gonna give ratings for these books, just like I didn't do for Fifty Shades of Grey, because once again, I am out here sitting here and I already know I wanna read the second one to see what's gonna happen because the way that just ended and how angry I am, I need to see how he's gonna try resolve that. Like. There's literally no way he can resolve that, in my opinion. He's done with Tessa needs to, like, stay very much away from him. If she goes back to him, she's a clown. But I am curious to read the second one, so I will end up reading it. So yeah, that is going to be it for this vlog, and I shall see you all next time for my next video. So, goodbye, guys. <laughs>